Now, <clears throat> in the last video, we talked about these three polynomial functions and their possible rational zeros, and we listed them using the rational root theorem. But now I'm actually going to determine if they are zeros, and if they are, um, let's factor it down and find all the zeros. So now we're going to go all the way, find all the zeros and all the linear factors that we call them. So I'm going to use the remainder theorem and the factor theorem to determine which one of these is in fact a zero of this function. So let's start with, sometimes you can look at it and determine, but I'll start here. Um, let's just try when x is 1. That's one of our linear factors. Let's try when x is 1. When I plug in 1, 15 times 1 to the third plus 14 times 1 squared minus 3 times 1 minus 2, I get 15 plus 14 minus 3 minus, this is not 0. I'm looking for it to be 0 because the remainder theorem says and the factor theorem says that if a, um, if a value is a 0, which corresponds to a factor, that means the remainder must be 0. And the remainder theorem says when I plug that value into the function, I should get 0 out if it is a 0. So this is not working. So 1 is out. Let's try negative 1. 15 times negative 1 to the third plus 14 times negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1 minus 2. This is a negative 1, so negative 15. This is positive 1, so plus 14. This might work. Plus 3 minus 2. So technically this is positive 17 and this is negative 17. It gives me 0. So negative 1 is my first actual 0. So let's start listing them. Let's list them over here. Uh, actually, let me rewrite the function too. So oh, I can copy and paste that. Let me bring that over here. Okay, so this is my function. Oopsie. Move that down. Grab all of it for me. There we go. Okay. This is our function that we're focusing on, and I'm going to list all the zeros of this function and all the factors, linear factors in particular. So this is the factored form. We're going to also list the factored form of the function f of x. And I might as well list all the x-intercepts. Okay? So this is all the information I'm going to gather from this. So the first zero that I determined was negative 1. So negative 1 is a 0 of this polynomial function, which means that x plus 1 is a linear factor, right? If negative 1 is a 0, x plus 1 is a factor, because if I set this equal to 0, I get negative 1. And that 0 is a real 0, so it's also an x-intercept. So now I could represent the factored form of f of x as x plus 1 times something else. We'll see what else we get. So I only have one of the zeros, I expect three of them, so I have two more to find. So what I need to do to find other factors is divide now. Now I'm going to use synthetic division. So I'm going to take this function, I might as well copy it down again, just so you guys have it on every page. Take this function, right, and I want to divide this function by what was my first zero? Negative 1, x plus 1. Now because this is in a form that I can use synthetic division, synthetic division will be used. 15, 14, negative 3, negative 2. And then in my little box here it goes negative 1, my, pot, my zero. Bring the 15 down, multiply diagonally, add vertically, multiply, add, multiply. I expect this to be zero because it's my remainder which means my other factor is 15x squared. Start with the third degree, end up with the second degree here, minus x minus 2. This is my other factor. Now, this is not a linear factor, but it is a quadratic factor, which is good because quadratics are easy to factor if they are factorable. So if I could break this down, so it's a third degree polynomial. If I could find one factor, then I can convert it into a second degree, which means that I can factor that using my trial and error, or whatever method you guys use to factor a quadratic function. Um, so let's see, 3x and 5x, let's see if this factors. So, 2 and a 1, that works. 2, 1, 
negative, positive, right? So this gives me 15x squared. This gives me, uh, this is plus, can't see it. Negative 2 here, and then outer is negative 6, inner is positive 5. That gives me that negative 1. So these are my other factors. So these are my other linear factors. So now my other factors, 3x plus 1, which when I set this equal to 0 will give me negative 1 third as a 0, which is actually on my list of possible rational zeros. And I also get 5x minus 2 as another factor, which if I set this equal to 0, I get positive 2 fifths as my 0, which was one of our possible rational zeros, right? So they're all rational numbers. So these are all values I can see on the um, x-axis. These are all that I can see on my graph. They're all x-intercepts because they're all real, um, which we represent like this. And now I can represent my fully factored case, 3x plus 1, 5x minus 2. So three zeros, all real, three linear factors. Um, this is the factored form of my function in terms of its linear factors. And these are the x-intercepts, and all the zeros are x-intercepts because they're all real. So what did I do? I started with a function. I have no idea how it factors. I have no idea what the zeros are. So I have to list the possible rational zeros using the rational zero theorem or the rational root theorem. Determine which one of them is an actual zero by plugging it in and looking for zero after I plug that in, which will give me one of my zeros and one of my factors, which I could go ahead and use synthetic to find my other. And the goal is to take your higher order um, degree polynomials and convert them into second order so that you can factor the way that you know and then break it down all the way. So obviously I'm going to do a couple more examples. But this is the second, let me get another. This is the second function that we did in the last um, video where we, we talked about the possible rational zeros here. And we listed them, and these are a little bit nicer than the last example. But I don't know if they all are, are zeros or not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in to my function, um, well, as many as I do until I get one that gives me zero. So let's start with one. And hopefully you guys can start you know, looking at it and determining if one's going to work or not so you don't have to waste your time. And I don't always write this all out either. But, you know, 1 plus 2 minus 5 minus 6. So this is 11. This is not working. Nope. Positive 1 is not a 0 of this function. Let's see if negative 1 is. Plug it in. Let's see if negative 1 works. So I get negative 1 plus 2 plus 5 minus 6. This is 7 and this is negative 7. That works. Again, it's just, this is a coincidence. But again, negative 1 is, a, is an actual 0 of this linear, of this um, third degree polynomial. So let me select this and bring it to the next page. Right? And let me actually select it again and bring it to the next page so we remember what it is. Okay, so my final answer is going to be here, and my final answer, remember, I can ask you a lot of questions, okay, so I can ask for all the zeros, I can ask for all the x-intercepts, I can ask for all the linear factors, or I can ask for the um, factored form of the function, okay, uh, mm -hmm. all of these require the same uh, set of steps, and we determined, right, that negative 1 worked, so negative 1 is one of those um, roots. Negative 1 is one of those zeros. And it is a real zero, so it is an also an x-intercept. Again, since negative 1 is the zero, x plus 1 is a factor. And we'll do factored form at the end. So I got one zero. I need two more because there's three total. I got one x-intercept. Um, maybe there's two more. I don't know. It depends on what those zeros are, if they're real or not. And I need two more linear factors. So <clears throat> to break this down, I'm going to use synthetic division. 
So technically I'm taking this function and I'm dividing it by x plus 1 because negative 1 was the 0. And I'm allowed to use synthetic division because of the form of this uh, expression. So 1, 2, negative 5, negative 6, take all my coefficient. In my box goes my 0. Bring down the first number. Multiply diagonally. Add vertically. Multiply by uh, diagonally. Add vertically. Multiply. Uh, oops. Add vertically, negative 6. Multiply diagonally, add vertically. I expected this to be 0 because this is supposed to be a factor. And negative 1 is supposed to be a 0. If I start with a third degree, then these are the coefficients of the second degree. And this is my other factor of my polynomial. But it's a second degree, so let me break it down more to get my linear factors. But this is okay, I can factor this. If it factors, 3, 2, plus, minus, does that work? So I have negative 6 plus 3, so that works. So I have my other linear factors, x plus 3 and x minus 2, so let me list them. x plus 3 and x minus 2 which means that my other zeros are negative 3 and positive 2, coming from this one and this one, which are in my list here of real rational, because these are rational numbers. And because they're real, then that means that they are x-intercepts. And my fully factored form of this function is the product of these three linear factors. Each one of these zeros is repeated once. The multiplicity is 1, so it's crossing the x-axis at each one of those. So if I were to, you know, roughly sketch this, just a quick little sketch. I'm not going to do crazy stuff. So negative 3, negative 1, and 2. The end behavior is down on the left, up on the right. It's going to cross, cross, cross. And this, you know, how high or how low it goes and where it crosses the y-axis is not, um, not you know, correct on this graph, but it's just a quick graph to show you kind of what I just determined. If I want more details, then I'll go and find the y-intercept, and I'll go and find the max and min and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I want to do one more. A fourth degree. I have a fourth degree polynomial. Actually, let me go ahead and copy this now. Oops, that's not the right one. Here it is. My fourth degree polynomial. Let me copy and paste it. I'm going to need more than one page for this guy. Okay, here we go, here we go. This last page is going to represent everything we want to find. So all the zeros, all the x-intercepts, all the factors, linear factors, and the factor form of f of x. Okay? Particularly linear factors, okay? Linear factors. So this is all the stuff that we're going to determine. I might roughly sketch it. We'll see. Um, so we started with listing all the possible rational zeros, correct? And I have a lot. Um, can I be honest? I know looking at it, one is not going to work. So I'm going to skip one and negative one because I don't see these coefficients. No way are they going to ever give me... Zero. So I know 1 and negative 1 is not going to work, but let's try positive 2 and see if that works. So I'm going to skip this because I already know they're not going to work by looking at it. Plug in 2. 2 to the 4th minus 6 times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 24. 2 to the 4th is 16 minus 6 times 4 minus 24. Ooh, minus 16 plus 24. This looks good, right? These will cancel. These will cancel. This works. So two worked. So I hit it on the first try. Awesome. Two is one of my real zeros, which means that it's also an x-intercept. And my linear factor is x minus two. Right? Two is my zero. It is a real zero, so therefore it's an x-intercept. And x minus two is my linear factor because this is uh, what I would set equal to zero to get to. So now I'm going to divide. Right? This function is going to be divided by my first factor, which is x minus 2, and its linear factor um, with a leading coefficient of 1, so I can use synthetic division. But be careful, I'm missing my third degree term, so I put a 0 in place. 
So four, third degree, second degree, first degree, and constant term. Remember when we are missing a term, we put a zero in place of the term that's missing, right? So technically this should be an x to the fourth plus zero x to the third minus six x squared minus eight x plus 24 in standard form with all the terms represented. Otherwise, you're gonna get the wrong thing when you divide. And I'm expecting this to remainder to be zero because this is supposed to be a factor. So that's a way that I can tell if I'm doing things right or wrong, if it all matches. Bring down my first number, multiply diagonally, add vertically, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, negative, negative, zero. I have a fourth degree polynomial. So this is going to be the third degree polynomial. So this is my other factor. Now, the problem with this is that this factor is not a quadratic. So that means I need to do synthetic division again with a real zero to, um, to basically break this down even further into a quadratic. So now I have to go back, and you could do it uh, one or two ways. You could take the, the, the possible zeros from this, or you can go back to the original, right, and see if you could find another real zero from here. I wonder if negative two would work. Oh, yeah. Wait, maybe not. No. Let's see if three, maybe. Let's see if three works. Three to the fourth minus six times three squared minus eight times three plus 24. This is, uh, what, nine times nine, 81 minus six times nine, 54. Mm, this doesn't, nope, this is not working. Not equal to zero, not working. So what I might do um, for my students is I might plug this into, rather than testing all that stuff, just kind of a quick cheat, plug it into my calculator and see what the um, other zeros are that it shows, if it shows more, if not. Um, oh, look at that. Check this out. Looking at my graph, it shows that 2 actually is a repeated 0. So let me show you what that means. If I take 2 and plug it into this other factor again, you'll see. Actually, I'm just going to go straight to synthetic because I know it's going to work. Um, 1, 2, negative 2, and negative 12. Um, so again, let me go through the process. 4, 8, negative 6, positive 6, right? 12. Notice I got another 0 as my remainder. So 2 worked in my other factor, which means that 2 is a repeated 0. So 2 is a repeated 0. I'm probably not going to write it again, but what that says is that 2 is another 0 here x-intercept. That means that this linear factor has a multiplicity of 2. Maybe I'll write that here, just so we know. This has multiplicity. I'm just going to say multiplicity, M-U-T, uh, multi-2, okay, just as a quick gist. That means that if I write this in factored form, this x minus 2 is going to be squared, has multiplicity 2, okay? Now I have two factors, I'm expecting, or two zeros, I'm expecting two more because it's a fourth degree polynomial. So let's see what I get from here. So from here, I already divided the other third degree polynomial by um, that x minus 2 again. So I got a second degree polynomial, which has x squared uh, plus 4 plus 6, plus 4x plus 6. This is the other factor. I'm breaking it down piece by piece, this fourth degree, I broke it down into a third degree, now I'm at a second degree. Second degree is awesome because um, we know how to solve these, we know how to factor these. I don't have to go through this synthetic division again. I only go through it until I get to the second degree. So if this was a fifth degree, I'd have to go from a fifth degree to the fourth degree to the third degree, then to get to the second degree. But it's a fourth degree, so I went from a fourth degree to a third degree to a second degree. So I only had to go through synthetic twice to get here. Now looking at this though, 
if you look at this, this second degree does not factor. This quadratic does not factor. I mean, you could try it, but it's not going to factor, which means that I have to solve this equation to get to my other um, factors. Let me add. So let me bring this to another page here. I'm going to take this guy, copy and paste. So now I'm here. This is where I am at this quadratic, and I have to solve this quadratic equation now to get the other two factors because this one does not factor. Otherwise, I would just factor this, make my life easy. So how do I deal with this when it doesn't factor? I use a quadratic formula. A is 1, B is 4, C is 6. So I have X is equal to the opposite of B, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. Maybe you guys can see what's happening when I actually simplify under the square root. 16, I'll show my work, minus 24. I'm going to get what? 16 minus 24 is negative 8 under a square root. I have a negative under a square root. When I simplify that, this is going to be 2i times the square root of 2 all over 2. Dividing everything by 2, I get negative 2 plus or minus i times the square root of 2. I have a complex, complex zeros now. Complex zeros. I have two complex zeros. One of them is negative 2 plus i times the square root of 2, and one of them is negative 2 uh, minus i times the square root of 2. These are my two last zeros. So now going back, back to my list of zeros, 2 was repeated twice, so I got two zeros from this one. Then I have a 0, negative 2 plus i times the square root of 2, negative 2 plus i times the square root of 2, and then another one, negative 2 minus i times the square root of 2. Now these are complex zeros, which means that they cannot be x-intercepts, which means that this graph only has one x-intercept. Now, my factored form, my linear factors, if I'm showing them with complex factors, anytime you have a zero, you're always subtracting it from x to represent it as factored form, right? x minus 2. Um, where is this other example up here? Right? If negative 1 is a zero, x minus negative 1 is a factor, or x plus 1. If negative 3 is a 0, x minus negative 3 is a factor, or x plus 3, right? If, if 2 is a, right, so on and so forth. So when I do that with my complex factors, my complex zeros, I'm going to write it as x minus the quantity, x minus, put a parenthesis, x minus the whole 0, x minus negative 2 plus i times the square root of 2. I leave it like this. My other factor is x minus the whole zero. So in factored form, x minus 2, remember, was, was uh, repeated twice, so it's squared multiplicity 2. Then my next <laughs> factor is complex, but we've represented this way, x minus the zero, and then times again, x minus the zero. And this is my fully factored form. of this fourth degree polynomial. So if I were to graph this, you would see only um, two at the x-intercept, and it would only touch there. It would not cross anywhere else. So I still have, um, I still have four total zeros, right? I still have four total zeros. But um, one of them is repeated and then two are complex. And if it, like, roughly sketching this, you know, it kind of looks like this, right? It almost looks like a parabola. It's not a parabola because it's a fourth degree, but it's similar. The end behavior is the same. It touches at two. Looking at the graph, I notice that this x-intercept should have a multiplicity that is even, so it's repeated two times or four times or whatever. In this case, it was repeated twice. And I don't see the other zeros because they're complex, okay?